have, like I said earlier, we have just one person. Right. We have one statement. And, it, and it's a confession of sorts. He's saying he did it. It's not a whodunit. It's not like O.J. Simpson or Jody Arias or, well, Jody Arias said she did it. Again, that was a self-defense case. So, so we're not looking for somebody out there. We know this is the guy. Um, but, you know, speaking of the defense wounds and things, we also have one person with the gun. The other guy was carrying Mr. Trayvon Martin. He was carrying M&Ms in the dark. Uh, you know, the, the weather, all of these things are little things that they're going to plant in the jurors' minds one way or the, or the other. Is it dark outside? Does that matter? Does the hoodie matter? Does, uh, does any kind of conflict, does the 911 call? All of these things, yes, it's 30 seconds, but it's also all of these other elements that play into it. We've got some emails uh, coming into our studio here. Um, we've got one with a person writing, will the lawyers be skeptical of picking a certain race of juror? They want to know about that because they feel like the blacks will tend to side with their own race, as will the Latinos and the whites. How do you respond to that? It's a possibility. I mean, you know, this isn't 100% foolproof. I mean, I'm sure that the prosecution and the defense, will, you know, will probably try and make sure that doesn't happen. But like I said, you know, what happens is, uh, um, you know, you, you'll see at some of these trials where one of, one of the attorneys will say something not supposed to something, say something, and then, then the judge will go to the jury. You have to discount that. I'm sorry, but you know what? That seed is planted. It's there. They can discount it all they want, but that's still somewhere in the back of their head. So like she was talking about the Skittles, you know, that he had and the Coca-Cola that this, uh, you know, that uh, Trayvon Martin had, you know, we're gonna, I mean, that's 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 not doesn't look good, you know, for the defense, okay? Uh, because he's, uh, you know, he's injecting something into their minds. Uh, what was going on? Like this is a little kid with candy walking down the street. Listen, Trayvon Martin would be alive today, okay, if he didn't, all right, have a street attitude. You see, that's, that's the bottom that, line. That is that is a a comment that first of all would be stated in opening or closing statements more closing because you can't make an argument in your opening statement closing argument right but street attitude is a very broad thing and it's something that actually can be used as a and I'm not saying this to you personally but something that can be used as something racist like calling a kid a thug I did that once when and I'm a, I'm a criminal defense attorney in Chicago and I called kids thugs thinking that it was okay and somebody said to me a black person said well that that sounds racist so the defense and the prosecution have to but they have to be careful about their language as well and the way that they ask questions and the way that they treat the witnesses and the other thing is is the kid with the candy that's what you said that is how the the prosecution is going to present this case the defense is going to show that it's a kid with a or a guy with a, a thug attitude or a street attitude um, just like having if the the defendant is going to be dressed up nicely and he's going to look innocent Jody Arias she looked like a librarian she was no librarian <laughs> we know we know that for a fact right exactly so these are all the images that we're going to plant in the in the jury's mind